Hello. Hello, beautiful people. Courtney here with Stars of the Morning Light. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for hitting that like button. Um, I appreciate all of you. <clears throat> this is our weekly vocabulary goal. I, I really actually, I love these videos. <laughs> um, probably because it's a little bit easier for me um, preparing stuff. Which, that being said, I didn't prepare so much for this. Um, because right now I am in the midst of putting together a class that I normally teach on like one or, you know, privately in my home or whatnot, but it was kind of laid on me to put it out there on some kind of platform so people can purchase. Um, it's going to be M Moon Manifesting 101, how to manifest by working with the moon. Um, and I will say, I really wanted to get it out in November and whenever I would sit down to like, try to get stuff that I had already worked on out, um, <clears throat> just computers for like three days were just not syncing or whatever. I don't know what was going on. So I put it down and I really realized, okay, the material I was putting out, uh, kind of really wasn't that great. So, recently I was like, I got a return of that. And I am putting together now, this week, it should be out by next week. So, continue to watch um, so you can look for it. It'll go even deeper into the message of today because today is manifesting and gratitude, okay? And so, look for it. I'll let you guys know you know, when I get to the next video, the second part of cause and effect, and I hope everyone is doing well. So this is actually one of my favorite topics to talk about. Um, I'm really going to lay down some truth here though, folks. So prepare yourselves. Um, cause I am not, uh, I'm not one to just be like, manifest all over the place which we can <laughs> we can but i'm not in support of that fully okay so let's just dig right in and if you do enjoy this video please subscribe share and hit that like button i appreciate it because it, it helps me well you know it helps with all the jazz that's going on here so manifestation or manifest um we had the beautiful full moon in leo last night and i mean it's still oh she was beautiful um and so now in like social media it's all this stuff you know manifest 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 it always happens with the new moon and the full moon hence the the course that i will be teaching um Let's really talk about manifesting. The definition of manifesting is clear or obvious to the eye or mind. Or display or show by one's actions or appearances to demonstrate. So for those who might read... Um, old literature, especially from, you know, like I read a lot of like 18th century, 19th century Russian literature. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm that person. Um, they'll use the word manifest, even if it's something like, um, Jason was manifesting signs of depression. Because that was the that was how we use that word. It is a form of demonstrating. It is a form of showing um, what is clear and obvious to our mind and our eyes. It's using all. It's how we use all of our senses. Keep that in mind. But now in today's world, which <laughs> this is why we do this, we talk about this constantly about how words change. You know. In today's world, man, 10 out of 10 times when you hear or read the word manifesting, it is going to be talking about 
like the law of attraction, um, the secret, as it is called uh, in today's world, bringing in that theoretical or spiritual um, hopes and dreams, they become reality. But isn't it interesting that the original meaning was clear or obvious to the eye or mind. To display, show, act, or have the appearance of, to dis act, to take action, to demonstrate. And now it's saying it's when the theoretical or the spiritual come into reality. It still needs all that stuff. It still needs the original meaning. It still needs for us to clearly see it like in our mind's eye, see it in our see it in our vision, to take action, demonstrate, have the appearance of, act as if. It still needs that. That the, the original meaning is still very present in manifesting the theoretical or spiritual becoming real, right? I'm, I'm telling you it's right. <laughs> I'm just telling you it's right. <laughs> um, it is what is needed. There are many um, components to true manifestation. And there's different forms of manifestation. And there's different kinds of manifestation that takes longer than others. Like there are instant manifestations. We're going to talk about it. So, the best stories that we could, well, going back to possible ancient texts, I'm not going to really read from it, but if, like, the best examples off the top of my head are, like, in the Bible, when, well, most generically people know of what I'm saying here, like, when Jesus turns water into wine, instant manifestation, when um, Jesus, that, the Matthew 14, I know it's in Matthew 14, when um, 5,000 people are, you know, at the riverbank and they're like, oh, we're going to, we don't have food. And they had five loaves of bread and two fish. And Christ was like, we got this. You can do it. And they were like, we can't do it. And he was like, oh my goodness, people, I'm teaching you how you can do this. Here you go. Let's take these two fish and these five loaves of bread and feed these 5,000 people. He was, again, trying to teach us we have that power as well. So that's Matthew 14. You can read it if you'd like. That's great. It's beautiful. Okay. Getting into how this really works. You know... For those beloved folks that have been listening to me, my biggest passion is to remind us of that flame spirit spark within. My bit, my, I guess you would say second biggest passion is teaching how, how to, if we want to manifest, actually, let's just say teaching how any spiritual growth any spiritual growth <laughs> comes from meditation and gratitude. If you want to see that as those are the two pillars and you're walking the line down the middle, the middle pillar, if you want to see that as those are the cornerstones, if you want to see that those are um, any cornerstones to a solid foundation, awesome, great, however you want to view that, it is meditation and gratitude. That is where everyone has to start. It's not, um, it's not these ancient texts. It's not, because it's all within us. These ancient texts are just there to remind us that we already have it in us. And I might be blowing up my whole, my whole channel right now. But it's in you. It's in you. It's definitely in you. It's in me. It's in you. It's part of that flame. But we have to reintroduce ourselves to that flame, to who we truly are. And it comes from meditation and gratitude. So how does gratitude fit into all this? 
Well, let's start with med. Yeah, let's start with meditation. How does meditation come into play here? When in terms of manifesting. And you literally could see, you know, meditation is one pillar. Um, gratitude is the second pillar. You're right in the middle as the middle pillar. And you are that grand magician. You are the one who can manifest your destiny, help the world. I mean, you can do all that you want. But these pillars here, these two cornerstones they are there so we can be right size and truly manifest what we what we really desire what I mean by that is um I don't know if any of you have seen that old Jim Carrey movie um the first oh my sh what was the name of that Bruce Almighty when he, he <laughs> He gets to have the power of God. And there's that scene there that he's like, this is awesome. And everyone's prayers were coming in like emails. And he's like, yeah, shoot, just have, have whatever you want, people. Yeah, this is easy. And within like 20 minutes, chaos ensued all over. <laughs> because he was just giving everybody their wishes. It's because people's wishes are not usually right-sized or right-wise, right-slash-wise. It's because we don't, we, we, um, we're looking at our wants versus our needs in our own lives and what's beneficial for other people. And I will tell you, even though we all have the power to manifest whatever we want, I mean, it, it is true. Like, if we all really wanted to win the lottery, we could. We have that kind of power. But the universe, it says it over and over again in the Emerald Tablets that we study here, that order and balance is the law of the cosmos. And we're going to talk more about that in cause and effect. So order and balance is the law of the cosmos. So even though us humans have this grand divine power of being able to manifest whatever we want, that universe, that lovely cosmos that is completely based on <laughs> order and balance will not just give all of us like Bruce Mighty on that movie and just give us all of our wishes. Because our wishes need to be right-sized. They need to be balanced. So let's really talk about that. How, I mean, I know the struggle's real, guys. I mean, I know the struggle's real. So I know a lot of people, they have their vision boards of their Ferraris and money and house and this and that. I know the struggle's real. And that's what the secret is going to tell you to do. Law of Attraction which I do want to say attraction still means attachment. It is all for self. So just uh, let's sit with that for a minute. Attraction me still means attachment. It is all for self then. So, but we have this lovely opportunity to meditate and connect with ourselves, connect our heart and mind and truly come to know what we need versus what we want. What would be best for not just ourselves, but all involved, our family, our friends, our community our world and through meditation is where you make those connections where you learn what you truly truly desire your heart's desire because most of us are not selfish we're not we're just the struggle is real so we're constantly trying to think of 
gosh, if I won the lottery, this would, this would be a whole lot easier. And the struggle tends to be so real that we can't think of anything else. We can't get outside of our bubble. Meditation gives us that opportunity, that quiet moment to step outside of our bubble and go, okay, well, what's really going on? What do I, what do I really need? What do my loved ones really need? What would be the most beneficial here for everyone? In meditation, you meet your flame, you meet your true desires. And what's wonderful about that is imagine if you put those on your vision board, because the cosmos is going to honor that. If it's balanced and healthy and good for not just ourselves, the cosmos is going to honor that. Going into gratitude, your other pillar, because I don't want to talk so much about meditation, because um, go to starsofthemorninglight.com. There's over 200 meditations on that podcast. It's free. Just listen. Um, you will find, med I mean, if you want to plug in any kind of search word, uh, you know, self-care, intuition, heart-centered, it doesn't matter. There's going to be some kind of meditation there. Healing, focus, share the light, whatever it may be. You can plug it in the search engine at starsofthemorninglight.com on the, on the med um, meditation podcast. You will find how to connect. There's also a Meditation 101 that is me talking and then bringing people through like a two-week course of developing how to meditate. Don't stress yourself out about it because that's the worst part. <laughs> Don't stress yourself out about it. Just sp spend time with yourself. For right now, spend time with yourself. Leading into gratitude. So, because gratitude is actually, man, gratitude saves my butt over and over and over again. Especially just having a gratitude list in my mind or creating one in my mind. I will say though, because um, I'm, I'm going to keep it real, if, if you guys have not approached doing that, writing out a gratitude list, I am fully um, empathetic to that. Because you've probably heard it. Maybe this is your first time hearing it. Praise God. That's great. Um, back in the day, this was like uh, the early 2000s or whatever. I'm some like 20, I don't know, I was in my 20s. I was in my 20s. Um, I had a teacher. We called him Cowboy Bob. And he was lovely and brilliant. And by the time I met him... He was much older. He he passed away shortly after that. And he was just such a such a good spirit. And he was the first to say, Courtney, you need to go home and write a gratitude list. And I <laughs> and I literally, this is how crazy I was. What is that? <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, gratitude, what? Like, I literally didn't know what that word even really meant. You know, like, wh what are you talking about? It took me <laughs> so many weeks of talking to Cowboy Bob, kind of talking to some other people, like, I'm being told to write a gratitude list. What's that going to do? And why should I do that? And I was so scared. I was so scared. It took, I think, three weeks before I even attempted it. And thank God, at some point, I think I talked about Cowboy Bob and he said, stop making it so big. Are you grateful for having coffee in the morning? Well, yeah. Are you grateful for the shoes you got on your feet? Well, yeah. Then just do it, Courtney. Stop making it so big. You know, because we get into our heads. But I knew I was scared. 
for me personally, I felt at that time that I was not worthy enough to have a gratitude list. I've talked to other people that they had other fears when approaching gratitude lists. Um, as if like if they were grat if they were grateful, then they it was like gonna void out the bad stuff, which that's not what happens. You know, like they would have nothing to bitch about, I guess. Um, which is not what happens at all, you know. And for me it was definitely a huge issue with worthiness. And what is interesting with that is it was the, the gratitude list that I started. And I did. I, I, he said, keep it simple. Courtney, do you, you know, you enjoy that coffee? You, are you happy you have indoor plumbing? Yeah, I am. That's the greatest invention ever. You know, I made it real simple. And out of doing that the first time and allowing that process to grow and blossom opened the first massive spiritual awakening that I had. And it was a long, gradual spiritual awakening of learning that I am worthy, that I I'm worthy, you're worthy, we're worthy to receive, we're worthy worthy to release, we're worthy to manifest, we're worthy to have the life that we want. It was that first gratitude list that ignited at least a eight year journey of me really going through all the all the layers of me accepting, experiencing, understanding, and knowing my worthiness. So, not only did it save my butt then, it saves my butt too today, ever, all the time. Um, we all have our down days, as we might call them. You know, okay? maybe self-pity days, maybe what the F is going on days. Stress is too much. We all have that, but we need to not let it linger for too long. And we deserve it. I mean, heck, we can have those days. My husband and I refer to them as we are being little. Like, are you little today? Yeah, I'm just not, I'm just not doing it. I'm, I'm going to lay here in, with my blanket and, I don't know, watch cartoons or something. I'm not doing it. That's okay. It's if we let those days continue and the best way to get out of them is a gratitude list also i i've used grad man i've used gratitude lists i um i was a professional driver for a few years and so i've have seen and dealt with the most insane stuff on the planet and i could i would start feeling road rage <laughs> boiling inside of me because you just see the most insane stuff and the moment I would go whoa 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 you're reacting to the insanity Courtney because and you're feeling it I would immediately go and say do a gratitude list and I would run through as I'm driving to calm myself down I'd take a nice deep breath and I would start running through a simple gratitude list as I was driving to calm me down. Because I would still have to drive. It wasn't like, you see what I'm saying? I was a professional driver, meaning I drove a lot. And so I would do that to then calm myself down so then I can just do my job and not let the insanity around me um, get my reactions going. We can all do that. You could be at your desk right now and everybody's chitter chattering, talking, doing crazy stuff at work. And if you're like all oh, these people, these people, and I can't, I can't focus. I can't handle it. I can't just take a nice deep breath. Especially if you do start practicing meditation and just run through some gratitude stuff. It will, I will, I guarantee you, 
it will instantaneously make you feel better and calm you down. Especially if you're a fire sign like me. Ooh, because when that fire gets lit, <laughs> I got to calm it down. How does that work, though, with manifesting? Well, A, I just told you, it reminds me every time, every day that I'm worthy. Because if we're trying to manifest and we don't believe we have the power, if we don't believe that we deserve, if we don't believe that we're worthy to receive these blessings that we desire, it ain't going to happen. It's not. This is all a journey for us to understand our mighty sovereignty and power here. So use gratitude. Also, this is how this is now 25 minutes in. This is the truth about um, the truth about manifesting, guys. This is the truth. Because the cosmos works with order and balance, that is how we also have to use manifestation. You got to think like I'm preparing this using the moon as our manifester. It is because the moon is the great balancer to that bright sun. All is balance. All is balance. So when we go to manifest, and it's either using the moon or not using the moon, just in proper manifestation, okay? Being right size about it, right wise about it. First, if it's not an instant thing that you know you need to do, if it's a long-term goal, continue to meditate to understand what you truly desire and need and, and want for yourself and others. And when you get that vision, you have to fully engage in, in all of your senses. You have to see it. You have to smell it. You have to imagine you're tasting it. You have to see all aspects of that coming into play. You have to envision all of it. Meditation is the key to that, to getting all of your senses involved. And when you finally start doing that, including actions, act as if, become as if, including actions once you got that in play and even maybe a little bit as in the midst of learning how to do that when we approach whomever god goddesses who cosmos universe however you want to view it that's lovely when you approach them you immediately you immediately Identify your gratitude to them. I, immediately for all things. And then humbly, humbly, universe. This is where we're at. And you know this. I, I need to receive X, Y, and Z. Awesome. So let's talk about instant manifestation for a minute. Usually, in the things that we want to manifest, there is some kind of lesson that the universe has put into the midst for you to learn. They also want you to acknowledge that. So gratitude. Be grateful for what we do have. Be grateful that you have a higher power to speak with. Be grateful that you have all this other stuff. Be grateful you have your family, friends, loved ones. Your tribe. They want to hear that. They also want to hear, okay, I have learned. I have learned. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for showing me how to act and think and know Thank you for allowing me to explore my worthiness. So it doesn't matter if it's long-term or instant. That needs to be there. 
a worship always needs to be there, but also it keeps us so right-sized. So, instant manifestation. Here's the true part about being right-sized. Um, let's talk, okay, let me give, I'm just going to give you some life examples. So, I think this was, this was last summer or two summers ago. Um, my husband and I, we, we purchased this house and this house was a, uh, it was a big fixer-upper, let's say. We got a good deal, big fixer-upper. And we knew at some point we would have to get a new air conditioner. But we kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, because that is a huge undertaking, you know, money-wise. And knowing that would be a problem, because we live in the southern part of the United States now, and it gets it gets real hot. Well, so I think this, it might have been last summer. Air conditioned, completely not working. Nothing we can do about it. It wouldn't matter what we did. It was not going to work. And it is now... End of May going into June. In the southern part of the United States, that can already be like 90 degrees every day. And my husband works out in the heat. And so we knew that in like three or four weeks, we were going to be able to have the finances to replace it. And so we just kept going, okay, we can maybe do this. We can maybe, we'll can. we just put so many fans up. We can do this. We can do this. Within like seven days it was becoming very clear. It was the miserable heat was manifesting us being lethargic, not really being able to eat, not because there was never a reprieve from the heat. It was manifesting like that, right? So I was at one of my um, part-time jobs and I'm, I, I just filed paperwork there. And at, I think about day seven or eight, I'm sitting there filing paperwork and I just, I just went, I just stopped. I just stopped. And I started talking to whom I worship. And I immediately went into, I am so grateful, knowing that in like three weeks we will be able to replace it. I am so grateful for this home. I am so grateful for what we have. I am so grateful that we can go to work. I am so grateful that gratitude, 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 gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then I went into, and I learned a lot here. Uh, we should have really have pri prioritized that air conditioner knowing that we live in the South now, right? We should have prioritized that well over like new carpet, right? Thank you. I, I really am learning my lesson here, not only about living in the South, but how to prioritize things, needs over appearances, things like that. I mean, I gave them a whole gambit of what I have learned. And I said, so that comes to today. I said, no longer can my husband and my dog and me be in, in this heat without a reprieve. I said, by the power that you have given me, I request today we get a reprieve from this heat. And I said, I don't know how it's gonna look. I'm leaving that up to you. I have full trust. I will do the actions that I need to do. But I trust that I will we will receive a reprieve from the heat today, okay? So there is the element of gratitude. There is the element of, I've learned this, thank you for the lessons, because living in the South is way different than the North. I've learned, you know, but it is taking a toll. Not just on me. I am now concerned about my pet and my husband. I am completely concerned about us. We are not going to be able to make it three weeks. So it is not just about me, because hell, I could have probably made it happen if it was just me. I was not working out in that heat all day and then coming home to a hot house. So all involved, I made it very clear. 
this happens today by the power that you have given me and the power that I'm showing back to you. This is a give and take, a balance. Thank you for the lessons learned. We're moving on. When I got out of that job, because it was only a few hours in the morning part-time, I, I was like, shoot. Okay, I need to see if there's like a window unit in some store somewhere. And I will tell everybody, if you're not from the South, fans, window units, anything is all sold out by like the beginning of May, April. I mean, it's, it's just, you're not going to find one. So I walked in, I, I was like, but I can try. We really can't spend the money because we're pointed towards an actual unit, you know, um, but I said, this is going to happen today. I don't know how, maybe I'll, I'll find like a damaged one. That's real cheap, you know, something like that. Right. I'm still doing the action. I'm participating with the universe because I don't know how this is going to roll out. So I'm in, um, I'm in the store and I get a call from the place that I professionally drive at, which if you're a professional driver, you have to take a physical every year. And I, uh, they were calling about that and I'm in the store and for some reason I was real busy that day. And I said, hold on, hold on. I gotta, let me get out of this store so I can hear you correctly. And as I'm walking through this busy store, cause I'm way in the back corner, I'm telling her I'm in here because our air conditioner broke. I'm not going to be able to fix it for another three or four weeks. I just don't know what to do, so I'm trying to find something. There was nothing in there. I'm telling this to one of my bosses, you know, just kind of trying to stay in communication as I'm walking out of the store. By the time I got out of the store, she went, Courtney, do you need a window unit? And I didn't know how to respond. I went, I went, what do you, what do you mean? She said, my husband and I have an old window unit that has been sitting on our kitchen floor that we've been praying about who to give it to because we can't just justify throwing away a decent unit when there might be somebody out there that needs it. Sorry, I'm getting really emotional. And I went, you gotta be kidding me. I said, I said, how much do you want? And she said, no, 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 no. This is a gift to you if God has presented this. We've been praying for somebody who needs it. You're telling me you're running around everywhere trying to find one. And this heat is getting very bad. You can have it tonight. So I went and picked it up. Her husband loaded it into my car. By that, by that evening when my husband came home from work, we got it into a window well enough. And I was able to put our blow-up bed in that smaller room. So it's like that room is just really cold. We can just lay in there. Within hours, by me saying, this needs to happen today. It has to happen. We can't live like this anymore. It was presented instant. I didn't know that was... She was calling me to set up when to get my physical... To make an appointment when to get my physical for my work. I didn't know that was, I didn't know she had a window unit. She didn't know I needed a window unit. That's how instant manifestation truly works. It is not all about us. It is not all about stuff we would like to have. It is about things that we need. Manna falling from the sky. It is things that we need. Here's a quick other story. Um, at some point, we're broke, broke, you know, and I need to get some food on the table. I need groceries and we're paying all the bills and not really paying attention to groceries. Oh, shoot, we need groceries. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to collect a bunch of stuff and go try to resell it and blah, 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 because I know this is going to change in like two weeks. We we're just waiting for that paycheck, you know what I mean? Like, da, da, da. The struggle is real. I'm there with you. I get it. I grabbed some extra boxes that we had and one of them was from something that was delivered like a, a month before for like one of our birthdays or whatever. It was just, you know, a box that I'm going to throw stuff in. As I'm going around my house, I'm also looking at the things that I'm grateful for. As I'm collecting things that I'm willing to get rid of, I'm looking at all the stuff I'm grateful for. And halfway through, I went, okay. And I did my thing again. 
as like the previous story. I start going to put, you know, saying that we need food. We, we need a reprieve right now. We need something to be able to put food on the table because I know we will have money down the road and I trust that we just need it today. I need to put some kind of food on this table. So I take one of those boxes. I, I've, I've done said everything and I'm still loading stuff into boxes. I take one of those boxes that the birthday gifts had come in previously, like a month earlier. And I start loading stuff in and I see a piece of paper. I'm like, what is that? I pull it out. That lovely human being had sent us a hundred dollar check for our birthdays that we never even saw because it was like stuck in the folds of the of the box. Instantaneously, I had money to put in my gas tank and go get some food for us to go do some shopping. Instantaneously, that check had been in that box for over a month. I had no idea. It showed itself when we really needed it. And when I said, okay, enough is enough. This is for my family. This is for us. We need, we need reprieve right now. I could have thrown that box away. Do you see how this works? So that's instant. Long-term manifestation. You have to stay. You have to stay in that vision. You have to stay in using all those senses. You have to act. You have to take the appropriate steps. If you want to be something, if you want to do this, you have to start working towards it. You work with the universe. You work with the universe. So long term, the hardest part is patience. The hardest part is trust. And that's learning the trust and learning your worthiness through the long-term goals of manifestation is actually the blessing of that manifestation. It's amazing. So you can see it as meditation as one cornerstone, gratitude as the other, the entire foundation of your spiritual being can have that glorious power of manifestation in there as long as we stay heart-centered, connecting the mind and the heart and knowing it ain't all about us. I will say, if you haven't um, really ever attempted a gratitude list, I do this every year. I mean, I, I'm, I now really work with gratitude, obviously. But every... Um, tourist season every spring kind of leading into that season I really do focus on what I'm grateful for because the sun is starting to come out I'm happy shiny free I really do start focusing on all things I'm grateful for because I'm going to start spring cleaning so when I do my spring cleaning that is the most great time to return back to that gratitude list because it's like Thank you. You have served me very well. I'm going to put you somewhere. I'm going to donate you. I'm going to give you to someone. I'm going to whatever. Because you've served me. Thank you. I'm going to release you now. I do a gratitude list the entire time I'm spring cleaning. I'm grateful for the house. I'm grateful that I can paint this wall. I'm grateful. Do you understand? I'm grateful that I can scrub these floors because I have floors. Spring cleaning, tourist season is amazing is amazing for really developing gratitude. Um, especially because the sun starts shining, you start planting and you're like, yes, plants nourish me. I'm so grateful for you. Um, I will also say during tourist season, um, this is a book that I, I do every, I think it's about three, four years now of doing it. This is a great book, a Gnostic book of ours. Um, it is June Singer. I read, I do this like a daily devotion every morning, really during tourist season. The reason I'm bringing this up is that if we start getting into, um, more Gnostic texts, 
this will give you a really good foundation of um, what is being said. It's also a great read. I use it as, a, like I said, like a meditation book in the morning during Taurus season. So there you go, my lovely people. You can med you can manifest whatever you want. You really can. I mean, we have that power. We really have that power. But let's check our motives. Let's check if we're right size. Let's check if we are showing enough appreciation to the universe. I mean, I'm telling you this, not just because I'm doing the Moon Manifesting 101 course and that should be out by next week somewhere. Because it really is, um, we can really manifest whatever we want. Meaning that we could manifest how, how things, the outcomes. We can manifest the outcomes of our dearly planet and lovely human beings and but in order to get to that we really got to start seeing how it works in our own lives building that confidence that power knowing that flame developing our worthiness through experiencing how to truly manifest so if we can start developing that imagine if we all then collectively start choosing to manifest the same stuff that is for the better good of all involved because that's what it's really about so i love you all this has been i i do have to cut myself off because this topic i can talk about nonstop. so be with me next week um i will then definitely know where to tell you to retrieve the moon manifesting 101 it's so much 101 that um, you'll be able to roll with it after that. Trust me, you'll be able to shine and, and start moving. So um, I love you all. And once again, I bow to you. Namaste. As thank you for hitting that like button, share, subscribe. Bowing to me. You are so beautiful. Thank you, lovely people. You really are.